Well, as we told you last week, the federal government has begun negotiations to purchase F-35 fighter jets for the Canadian military. It would be a brand new plane for the Air Force, but one that other countries have been using for the past decade. And some of the manufacturing already happens right here in Canada. The CBC's Brett Ruskin got the chance to visit one of those manufacturing facilities and joins us now live from Halifax. Good morning, Brett. So tell us about this Nova Scotia connection to the F-35. Well, good morning, Jennifer. Yes, absolutely. Nova Scotia is part of the F-35 construction process. Now, this province known for a couple of things, uh, lobster fishing, the lighthouse at Peggy's Cove, as well as something that many Canadians hold close in their hearts, as well as their wallets and change purses on the dime, the Blue Nose, which was built in Lunenburg. Take a look. A schooner was launched from the Smith and Ruland shipyard in Lunenburg. Launched in 1921, the Blue Nose was the best built schooner when it came to speed. A symbol of pride for Nova Scotia and for the town of Lunenburg where it was built. That was 100 years ago. Here is what Lunenburg is building now. You know, the Blue Nose was very innovative for its time. Um, we were key players in the industrial fishery and this is just, you know, Stelia has, is part of the latest phase of Lunenburg's history in that regard. Stelia, a French company contracted to build body panels and parts for the F-35 with its North American headquarters less than two kilometres from where the Blue Nose was built. We're still building in engineering, it's just yes. different transportation. The product is different. And you would think that composite manufacturing, like plane parts, is like robots all over the place. It's not. See those jagged shapes on the jet? Those are the types of panels made at Stelia. Paper thin layers of carbon or Kevlar fiber placed onto molds by hand with the utmost precision. All the plies have a certain direction to them. So they know exactly which direction it's supposed to go when it's placed on the mold. I wasn't allowed into the factory, but I did get to see and touch with gloves on some of the panels. Oh my gosh. It's so light. Yeah. It feels stronger than what it is yeah. in terms of its weight. Strong and light are obviously key factors for this high performance jet, costing, I later learned, around 97 million Canadian dollars each. I'm guessing that was expensive, right? <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I should have been more careful with it. <laughs> and while production continues here for other countries' F-35s, Canada could one day have its own F-35s with parts handcrafted here in Lunenburg. We're going to be a part of potentially Canadian history soon. Again. Yeah, right. And so there are lots of other country and lots of other uh, companies and you know factories in Canada part of the supply chain for the F-35, uh, not just the one in Lunenburg, but it is kind of neat to see the connection one century to the other of this handcrafting happening there on the South Shore of Lunenburg. Sure, right, that was some interesting time travel you did there, and I'm really glad you don't have butterfingers, Brett. <laughs> but the gloves is that because you couldn't even have your fingerprints on it? Yeah, so the gloves were there, not just for fashion. Uh, they were there because the, the oils on your hand, even though they were going to clean those panels, those were actual panels that would end up on an F-35. And they said if they didn't wear gloves and didn't clean them properly, there was the chance that the paint might not stick to them. So I, I didn't want, you know, a Brett Ruskin shaped handprint on an F-35 flying around. So there you go. Thanks for not embarrassing CBC on that one. <laughs> Brett, good to see you. <laughs> Brett Ruskin in Halifax.